Saonda in Manabi, which is where we get a lot of our cacao from. And you can feel that the road there is a little bit bumpy, but you know, it makes it all worth it. Beautiful analogy of life. When you get a bumpy road, you know that this comes, you know, paid and rewarded on the other side. We, we chose this area when we first, um, this is one of the areas where we chose to source cacao from. It's uh, not only in a beautiful cacao with old trees, but it's also an amazing community of beautiful and loving people. And we picked this area because it's an area that is, um, it's hard to access. And, uh, and we just felt like we could have an impact here in this community, a positive impact here in this community. And the trees, people, love, you will see. <laughs> We're excited to show you. Mercedes Uno, and we're visiting Emilio Garcia, one of the farmers that we have been buying cacao from for the last three years. In the previous video, we showed you what the standard process for cacao is, how cacao beans are treated, fermented, dried, and how this affects the quality of the final result. Today, our intention is to display how the people that we work with do it. Emilio is a part of a typical Manavit farmer family, a hardworking man if you ever get to meet one. The man built his entire house and only with the help of his family. We also met with Maria, Emilio's wife, who took care of their children and helps him with the farm. They invited us to walk around their finca. Emilio has had this farm for about 35 years and when he came here there was, there was really nothing here. And he has built this house and this place with his bare hands. And you'll see the trees up there and uh, the soil. It's not, it hasn't been a difficult place I could imagine to, to set up a home and in a garden and, and you can see how hard it works. I mean, this is, this is one of the most beautiful farms that I have seen. Don Emilio's property, as you can see, works by letting mother nature do what she knows best. He hasn't intervened with the land unless necessary and has integrated the cycles of the different plants that he grows so they can help and feed each other. No pesticides, no herbicides, 100% organic fruits and vegetables working in unison without damaging the soil. Pruning lower leaves in the cacao trees is an important practice for Don Emilio. He has to be consistently vigilant around his property, taking the new sprouts that not only take space from the floral beds, but sometimes even redirect the entire plant into foliage production and stops making any more cacao fruit. This is, as my uncle would say in Argentina, he used to eat meat. Jamón del medio, ham from the middle. Very, very sweet. It's not bitter at all. When you bite, as Alfredo was telling us, when you bite into the seed, this is the first step of tasting the qualities of the organolectic qualities of the cacao during the, you know, while it's fresh. And so you get an idea of what you're going to get on the other side. The beans, when you bite into them, they're not bitter. They're so sweet. It's, it's not normal to find old trees like this in these farms because old trees are not very productive and they're very, very hard to, to harvest. And one of the reasons why we've been working with Emilio is because he doesn't cut down these old trees and he maintains them here. These very old trees are, are the are land raised varieties here of the country. Became, they were here before this GMOs were became popular. It's beautiful to see this old tree stuff here. Don Emilio explained to us there's a type of pest, a type of moth, that grows inside of the cacao tree sap. This pest kills the trees from the inside. 
he has to check every time that he goes around his property for signs of any infection. It is so dangerous that the blade used to cut the infected tree cannot touch a healthy one. If not, the infection will be passed on. It's a tricky situation because if, for example, he, just like now, he touched with his machete this tree and then he goes into another tree to cut a, a branch with that, this pest will put, put it go into the next tree and so he has to disinfect that knife. And likewise to remove this tree because if you leave it, the this little insect will propagate into other plants and so he has to you know cut it and then carefully remove it out of here so that it doesn't fall into other plants after visiting their drying pods we sat down with don emilio to talk for a moment bueno el que desea tenerlos así mantenido pues es muy importante porque como que es un árbol como que si fuera si usted lo mantiene como que si fuera un árbol joven Siempre hay árboles viejos así, dan más que los ojos. El, el, el agua es la base para la planta. Si nosotros no tenemos el agua para regar una planta, regar una planta, pues la planta no produce lo que es lo que completamente lo que tiene que producir. Siempre el agua es necesaria para eso. Bueno, para mí significa el cacao porque la, la mantención, la, Este es el que da el dinero para nosotros y con eso lo mantenemos la familia. Este es el que hace el trabajo para la finca, para arreglar la finca. Cuando uno se toma una tacita de cacao como que se, se siente fuerte. It was a pleasure and an honor to meet Don Emilio and his family again. We couldn't be happier to see how much love and care he has put into his farm during these years. We left with our hearts full and ready for more. So it's time to go visit a very interesting soil regeneration project in the area. David Sanchez has been working in agriculture since he was 16 years old. He became a community leader at that age and he kept capacitating himself with different techniques based on circular economy, which is trying to understand every aspect of the chain production as a partnership between human ingenuity and nature. La importancia, aquí la importancia de, de, de tener, de que todo el espacio se aproveche al máximo. So we're so excited to be here at a farm that is 
allowing us to understand it's worked by a technician that also grew up in this area so he understands the needs of the land and has been utilizing practical action into how to support the land in the right way. David then explained how they're using the river without wasting or overusing its stream. The system they use is based on creating reservoirs where they can use and keep the water until needed. And also, they have tracked the optimal usage according to the temperature, stage of growth, and so on. Our last stretch of the day took us to meet Don Santiago, one of the seven producers in the area that work with cacao. So beautiful to know that everybody knows who's taking care of the land. These are beautiful ancestral trees that have been here for many, many years. <laughs> Dolce, non c'è niente di. Is it sweet? There's no bitterness whatsoever. This cacao is. Absolutely amazing. We took a couple of minutes to ask David what his view was regarding the new generations of producers. Like I mentioned before, agricultural businesses like these are more than a company. It's a family, passing down all the experience and knowledge from their elders to the young ones. Una estrategia que enamora a los jóvenes. Y para el 2021 tenemos una propuesta, ojalá se nos salga el financiamiento, que es si nosotros vamos a entregar plantas, nuevas plantas para establecer, busquemos dos programas pilotos, dos grupos de, de jóvenes y mujeres, donde podamos decir, necesitamos 20.000 plantas. Yo en vez de comprarle esas 20.000 plantas a un viverista afuera, quiero que ustedes la produzcan y que ese ese dinero, en vez de que salga la comunidad, se quede con la organización. Y entonces prácticas como esa ayuda a que las mujeres, los jóvenes, se involucren en un proceso de producción, pero también que generen ingresos para su economía, para la economía familiar. Our last stretch of the day took us to meet Don Santiago, one of the seven producers in the area that work with cacao. Tengo cinco hijos y claro, ellos se van a seguir en la finca. Claro, porque esto es un, un sacrificio para nosotros y ellos tienen que seguirlo. Shared a little bit about who we were and what Cacao Lab was all about. The conversation, though, stirred away from that and we ended up just sharing stories, jokes, and even some of the wisdom from Alfredo. Seeing these three places reminded us of a very simple thing. People that care and love what they do are the most amazing partners to work with. If people like Santiago, David, and Emilio kept showing up, we can truly change the way that we relate with the earth. And we can find balance that we are so desperately needing. For us, it was a reminder of why, even amongst a country of such great cacao like Ecuador, we look for the best. For people like these three gentlemen and their families, that put everything into their land and give us all our incredible ceremonial cacao. See you next time. <laughs>